Ah, Dungeon Meshy time. The time of week, which is for Dungeon Meshy, which is a good time of week. I like this time of week. Uh, welcome along to a watch-along reaction thing for anime. And if you haven't done one of these before, the way it works is that there's a timestamp up in the upper left corner, which will help keep you synchronized with what I'm doing and I'm seeing. And whenever I see or say see something that's worth saying anything about, I'll say stuff out loud because it's, it's a reaction. That's kind of the point. But also, sometimes I'll have more to say than I can just like say out loud during the episode so i'll pause and when i pause uh i'll give you a little countdown three two one pause and we'll pause together and i'll say my stuff and then i'll say three two one unpause and then we'll go together again and you can use the little still that'll pop up in the background to sort of synchronize by because uh i have very cleverly set it up such that uh every time i pause uh, it pops up a little still on screen so that I'm not actually playing back any anime in sequence and Netflix's lawyers can't assassinate me. That's the way that this works. Uh, so sit along, sit down, come along, have have enjoy have enjoyment of a time of, of listening to a man be excited about animation because that's the point of this thing. And uh, let's start the episode from zero before the Netflix logo, before everything in three, two, one, go. I do like the detail of the little party sort of walking around while we have the large again giving this sense of like mastery and integration into an ecosystem which I think Dungeon Meshi is very much about Characters less as characters, but more as natural features of the place they are. And I really can't stop just being charmed by the ambition of character design that this series have. Like, compared to so much other, especially, like, I know I harp on Isekai a lot, but especially Isekai. This series, like, it tries, right? Like, not not that everything it does is, like, perfect or immaculate, or whatever, but it tries. Like, it attempts to do something with character design that Isekai just so rarely seem interested in at all. Dog man. My, my. Little bit of sense of the politicking. I love the dog, man. Also, like, again, character design. Female characters whose primary feature isn't that they are pretty. Right? Right? 
three, two, one, pause, right? Like that we have this, I don't know if she's supposed to be a dwarf lady or whatever, but like, she's like, she's like a bigger girl. She has like the hair in front of her eyes, like depriving us of the eyes, which is so like in, in classic anime girl design, right? Like the eyes, like, oh, they have to have the big shiny eyes with the lots of colors. And then like, that's a huge part of their appeal. That's their cuteness comes a lot from there. Not with her. Like that's, that's not a, that's not a priority with her design, right? And the same thing with like the, the halfling girl or whatever the hell she is. Um, it's like they are cute. Like there is cuteness. There is appeal to their character designs, but it doesn't all come from the same aesthetic source, right? Like it doesn't all come from anime girl prettiness. It comes from different sources. It comes from like sort of cozy, comfy appeal. Like it's just like it tries to do different kinds of character designs because there are also like characters in Dungeon Mesh whose appeal is that they are pretty, right? Um, or whose part of their appeal is that they have that like that, that prettiness to them. But there's just other things as well and that's the thing like watching so much typical anime that I, I i can get so desperately bored because it so much of it really doesn't know anything to do with a female character design except oh we we define them on an axis of pretty and that's kind of all we kind of have right um and that's it's just so limited right it's not that it's bad it's not that anyone's wrong or evil for enjoying those things just that i've been watching anime for like, <laughs> like fucking over 20 years now and like at some point a man gets tired you know at some point we've had enough candy i want some steak and some beef like i want i want some other things also please anyway three two one unpause Yeah, sure, open it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you're rich. <laughs> there again there that little group shot okay three two one pause okay so we're 2026 right now um so let's just remember that i'm just gonna go back and grab that group shot because like <laughs> like again that thing about trying to do something other like i like that each character has their own specific body language right and their own like their own very specific reaction to the thing that's happening which like for example the dog man straight up arms just down down along his side kind of go oh like like he had like you immediately get a sense of his personality there right and that this lady like she's so charmed by it. she's like oh my god like she has that sort of cutesy thing there she's got sort of a more serene sanguine like oh that's cool but she's like different personality vibes, right? Like, you get to see different parts of their character expressed physically through their acting, through their motion, and where the character design helps with it, right? Like, that, that, sort, of, that sort of gregarious gremlin satisfied <laughs> look on her face, right? Like, mm, it's just good. It's just, it's, it's just good craft. I just like it. Okay. Uh, 2026. There. Okay. Three, two... One, unpause.
Yeah, sure. <laughs> Those coins are definitely real. I bet they're mimics. I don't remember, but... <laughs> Again, that casual relationship with death. Oh, I haven't read Dungeon Mesh in so long. Uh-oh. Okay, three, two, one, pause. The, 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 I haven't read Dungeon Meshi in forever, so I don't remember much of the early story. Um, and I forgot about that part, but that's something like, I want... If you're a DM and you're running a D&D &D game, homebrew a sword like that. Give it to your fighter. Because that's such a, that's such a Dungeons and Dragons ass thing to me. Like this thing of like, 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 it's not a magic sword plus one, but it's like, oh, this is a sword that like alerts a warrior to date because that fits so well with fairy tales and mythology, right? Like sting glowing blue in the dark um, whenever enemies are near kind of thing. Like, ooh, like that's the good shit. Um, that's mm. <laughs> like as a, as, a, as a little world building, like as a way to give the characters access to special powers that sort of differentiate their abilities and their roles. It's just like from a storytelling perspective, a really good way to do it rather than, oh, you like, again, dunking on Isekai, uh, but more specifically dunking on fantasy that takes like a, a video game approach to power level, right? Like where it's like, oh, this character is an S rank adventurer, which means they have access to uh, th 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 and such powers. And like when you rank up, you level up and you become, you gain the new spell power ability. Like rather than that sort of, of that video game thing of like where the character levels up, right? Like, and that means they can now cast the fighter ability super slash or whatever that it's, oh, like they adventure, they find things, like they taught, like they gain experience, and that's the thing that empowers them fundamentally. Like not in in the sense that that's better than the character leveling up by gaining more skill or whatever, but that for me that's more interesting because that becomes a world building element, right? Like the sword now is like a part of the world building element. The sword is a part of the dungeon, right? It's a part of that ecosystem, so that ties into the thematic of dungeon. Like all oh, it's good stuff. It's just from a storytelling perspective, that's a great way to do it. Anyway, three, two, one. On pause.
<laughs> I don't think I could get myself to. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Marcel. <laughs> uh. Bug burger. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh, some real quality too. Cause you are a team. <laughs> Two, one. Perfect D and D party dynamic, like just absolutely immaculate. Senshi is like a a fighter barbarian with 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 like the chef feet. Ha! Huh. <clears throat> maybe, maybe don't do that. Ooh! Oh, the animation on that ghost! Oh, there's some good animation on that shit. Hey, we finally get to see her again. That's a nice way to do a flashback.
That's a really natural way to do a flashback, too. Well done. Ooh. Okay, so... Ooh. Oh, that map is gorgeous. Okay, interesting little... Okay, three, two, one, pause. Right. So, <laughs> that's very funny. But uh, we are at minus 738. Okay. Let me just... I quite like that, like, when he's talking about how salt has been used to purify, like, we switch into this, which is like a sort of uh, ukiyo-e, like, Japanese traditional art style. Um like with these washed out watercolors and like this sort of ink washes because that's very much like that. I know that that's the thing in Shinto um, that salt is like a, a purifying thing that, 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 that can undo evil spirits. I, I quite like that little touch of like, Oh, like even within the world of dungeon meshi, when we're talking about lands in which salt are used to purify, apparently they are Japan coded, right? Like they are at least East Asia coded, I should say. Um, the interesting thing is that they didn't quite do that with, like, the booze, for example. Like, this is, like, the, when they're talking about, like, the booze, pre presumably this is, like, Dionysus that we're referring to here, or some other religious tradition, but it doesn't have that, that custom art style to sort of denote the artistic tradition that they're talking about. There's a little bit of it here where I think, like, the scarab beetle and the sun and the thing, like, that's presumably referencing Egypt. Um, but, hmm. <laughs> Curious. Like I I just liked that they that they jumped into this um for that particular scene. Anyway. There, okay, right. Uh three, two, one, unpause. <laughs> Again, some real nice animation.
<laughs> Quietly some really solid animation. <laughs> I love his little his little jump. <laughs> oh his little his little hops like his little again personality in the animation Ice cream. <laughs> Extra system sorbet. <laughs> Lias. <laughs> no help from Senshi. <laughs> so we talked about um in these reactions before like like me sitting here thinking about like the production pipeline of how they're making the series right where clearly the first three episodes they front loaded a lot of the animation budget which is like again you want to catch people's attention it's a good idea to do and then episode four was a fairly like this was a very that was a very standard sort of seasonal anime episode right like it's like the animation wasn't bad it just wasn't exceptional this episode like there were some shots and some moments where, where like the anime, like they really, oh shit, someone put a bunch of effort into this one little shot. Like where there weren't any sort of standout sequences, like the fight with the living armors, right? Um, but there was like just little moments, like especially with the movement and the and the motion of the ghosts, um, that was just like, oh, oh shit, like ah, oh, like, why just kind of caught a, like a whole bunch of of good effort being put into like making those things feel like weightless and spooky and like like especially the one like when Lyos is reaching for his burger like a big dumb idiot that he is um and the ghost that comes out and like sort of reaches up at him like had has a really like there's a really good animation aesthetic in that one uh that I very much appreciated I quite liked I quite liked it a lot actually 
and that's like yeah okay so like i suspect we're not gonna get the the like the big banger episodes like the really whoa like the ones that are really gonna blow my mind out until like the end of the season because presumably like the front load of the bunch of the animation budget and now they're sort of saving it up for like like major moments down the line but like they're still in little moments in between things like where i can see a lot of the corners that they cut like especially um like all of the sh all of the shots of like lios and senshi sort of fighting off the ghosts like the classic thing that anime does a lot where it just puts a still image on screen and kind of pans over it with some sound effects to kind of imply action like that was used a lot in this episode but that's the thing like when i watch anime what i like to see is like when there's like where i could clearly see the 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 mind of the director and like the 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 animation director and the, and the coordinators at work trying to figure out where do we put our budget like where do we spend it right so this episode lots of those like very cheap static shots of just like s static shot pan put a little bit of audio over it that's fine and then that little thing of like oh shit we we put a little extra effort into the ghosts right like we put a little more into making those things look cool um and little little things about like the moments when clearly okay here we want to do a bunch of character animation um where like a bunch of work is put into it right and that, mm, mm, that, that i like seeing that because like a lot of anime don't, like, there are anime, especially really stinker anime, um, like the mobile game trash, you know, that's that shit, uh, that, that don't really master that discipline very well. Like, they don't really seem to be that good at, at budgeting exactly where their animation budgets should go, and aren't that good at, like, cutting a corner, but then using the, the resources freed up by that cut corner to do something else a little bit better than it otherwise would be. Um, and that's something I've enjoyed about Delicious and Dungeon. Um quite a lot actually like just because i'm an animation nerd right like i like being like looking at it and trying to trying to think into the process of how it's made um and the considerations that might have been might have been like playing out there um let me see let me see if i can find that ghost uh ghost that reaches for laios yeah here Let's see nope not there like, there, like, this sequence, like, with the line animation, and this sequence, like, as the ghost is, like, climbing up his hand, like, there's a lot, there's a lot going on with, like, the way that they're, like, the shadows around the ghost's shoulder. You can see, like, this thing in the center of the face, right? Like, the ghost has flesh on it, but then you have this center of the face, so it's like you can see through the flesh into the skull below, um, like, the glow effects that they're using. Right, and just, like, you can see there's a lot of effort put into the texturing and just the rendering, like, the physical rendering of what does this ghost's body look like. It's not just a flat blue, like, translucent shape. It's like, oh, shit, like, look at all this, like, gnarled skin and the veins across the hands and these, like, bony fingers, like, protruding out of the hand. And they, like, the corners have been cut, but then little little moments of extra effort and that's some really good compositing going on here as well by the way like just that's that's the shit i like to see um in anime like this i don't know why it defaulted to those subtitles um i think also like the the animation on this guy um as he's like wobbling around and and encountering the part like it's some it's a it's a series of fairly simple little loops of animation but like it, like it is very well done like it's it's that's a relatively complex thing to animate right and that's clearly they put some of the budget there which I like because this is like a flashback moment for Fallon where we're like, we're finally, after like five episodes, we're finally actually diving into like, who the hell is Fallon? Like, why is the party so interested in recovering her besides the fact that, oh yeah, she's my friend and she was like, she's Lyos' sister. Like, besides that, what else did she mean to the party? What what was her role in the dynamic of the party? And this is where we kind of get to see that not only is she kind of like the heart of the party, like she's like, she's the classic cleric right like she's the oh brother I, I shall help them without doing violence oh like that but also that like for laios especially like she's 
she's like an, emo an important emotional support for him because he's a fucking weirdo who says weird shit and she's the sister who finds that funny and charming rather than looking at him like a fucking weirdo right so like you can tell that she's a little bit of the glue that kind of holds the party together in some ways which i think is the point of of like showing the other adventuring party like having that opening scene with the guy who's talking about oh yeah big parties they're rare because like everyone people die <clears throat> and they fight over money and like they they drift apart and shit like that um so like so i like that as a thing of like showing off why um like, not just that, oh, it's because it's a system, we have to save it, but, like, that there is, like, a... It's not just for the characters that they're trying to save Fallon, it's also for the party. Like, without her, the party might not work so well. And you kind of get the sense that Senshi has kind of stepped into that role in the party a little bit. Like, he he tends to be the glue that sort of smooths over um, other conflicts, but not quite. Like, he's, he's not able to be quite as supportive to... Laios, um, emotionally as Fallon. Like, li again, little things about, like, what are the character dynamics? Why do these people care about each other? Beyond just, oh, we're members of the same party and probably friends, like, but showing, like, um, which I like. Like, there's a sense of, of, of a family dynamic there underneath it all. Anyway, good episode. Uh, I believe, actually, just as I sat down to record this, I saw that episode six is also out. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to record the reaction to that and maybe upload it on the same day. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to do, but more dungeon meshy so uh see you later